Top 25 General Electric GE, Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked by General Electric. These questions cover various aspects of the interview process, including behavioral, technical, and situational inquiries. We will also provide detailed answers and insights to help you prepare effectively. This guidance will enhance your confidence and readiness for your upcoming GE interview. 1. Why do you want to work for GE? Working for GE excites me due to its commitment to innovation and sustainability. The company's focus on developing cutting-edge technologies aligns with my passion for engineering and problem-solving. I admire GE's dedication to making a positive impact on society and the environment. Additionally, I am drawn to the collaborative culture that fosters continuous learning and professional growth. Joining a global leader in various industries presents an incredible opportunity to contribute my skills while also learning from talented professionals committed to pushing boundaries and achieving excellence. 2. How do you stay updated with the latest advancements in your field? To stay updated with advancements in my field, I regularly read industry journals and subscribe to relevant newsletters. I also participate in webinars and attend conferences whenever possible, as these events offer insights from leading experts and provide networking opportunities. Engaging in professional online forums and communities allows me to exchange ideas and learn from peers. I also take online courses to enhance my skills and knowledge, ensuring I remain competitive and informed about innovative technologies and best practices. 3. Describe a time when you had to work on a challenging project. How did you overcome the difficulties? In my previous role, I was assigned a project with a tight deadline involving the integration of new software across multiple departments. Initially, there was resistance from team members due to the learning curve. I organized a series of workshops to address concerns and facilitate training. By fostering open communication, I encouraged feedback, which helped identify specific challenges early on. We implemented a phased approach, allowing gradual adaptation. This collaborative strategy not only eased the transition but also built team morale, resulting in successful software deployment ahead of schedule. 4. How do you handle working under pressure and tight deadlines? When working under pressure and tight deadlines, I prioritize tasks based on urgency and importance. I break down larger projects into manageable steps, allowing me to focus and make consistent progress. Maintaining open communication with team members is essential. It helps in delegating tasks effectively and ensuring everyone is aligned. I also practice stress management techniques, such as short breaks and mindfulness exercises, which help me stay calm and focused. By maintaining a positive attitude and a solution-oriented mindset, I can navigate challenges effectively, ensuring timely project delivery. 5. Can you provide an example of a successful project you were part of in your role in it? In my previous position, I was part of a team tasked with implementing a new software system that streamlined operations. My role involved coordinating between departments to gather requirements and ensure alignment on goals. I facilitated regular meetings, gathered feedback, and adjusted our approach based on team input. By fostering collaboration, we successfully launched the system ahead of schedule, which resulted in a 30% increase in productivity and improved user satisfaction. This experience taught me the value of communication and teamwork in achieving successful outcomes. 6. How do you prioritize and manage multiple tasks efficiently? To prioritize and manage multiple tasks effectively, I start by listing all tasks with their deadlines and importance. I categorize them using a priority matrix, focusing on urgent and important tasks first. Using tools like digital planners or project management software helps me visualize progress and allocate time efficiently. Regular check-ins with team members ensure alignment and address any roadblocks. I also practice time blocking, dedicating specific hours to focus on high-priority items, which enhances productivity and reduces overwhelm, allowing me to meet deadlines without compromising quality. 7. Tell me about a time when you had to adapt to a significant change in the workplace. During a company-wide restructuring, my team was realigned, and our project goals shifted dramatically. Initially, there was resistance among team members due to the uncertainty of new roles and responsibilities. I took the initiative to organize a meeting where everyone could voice their concerns and share ideas on how to navigate the transition. By fostering open communication and collaboration, we developed a clear action plan that aligned with the new objectives. This proactive approach not only eased the transition but also strengthened team cohesion and enhanced productivity during a challenging time. 8. How do you approach problem solving in your work? When approaching problem solving, I first define the issue clearly to ensure I understand the core problem. Then, I gather relevant data and input from team members to gain diverse perspectives. I explore potential solutions, weighing their pros and cons. After selecting the best approach, I develop an action plan and communicate it with the team to ensure alignment. Throughout the process, I monitor progress and remain flexible, ready to adapt if new information arises. This structured yet adaptable method helps me effectively tackle challenges and achieve desired outcomes. 9. Describe a situation where you had to work with a difficult team member. How did you handle it? 
In a previous project, I worked with a team member who frequently challenged ideas and resisted collaboration. To address this, I took the initiative to understand their perspective by arranging one-on-one -on -one meetings. I listened actively and acknowledged their concerns, which helped build trust. By finding common ground, we established a more cooperative dynamic. I encouraged open communication within the team, fostering a supportive environment. This approach ultimately led to improved collaboration and a successful project outcome, demonstrating the value of patience and understanding in teamwork. 10. How do you ensure attention to detail in your work? Attention to detail is vital in my work to maintain high-quality standards. I employ several strategies to ensure accuracy. First, I create checklists that outline tasks and requirements, helping me track progress systematically. I also allocate time for thorough reviews of my work, identifying any errors or omissions. Utilizing tools like project management software allows me to monitor tasks closely. Seeking feedback from colleagues helps me gain different perspectives, ensuring nothing is overlooked. This structured approach fosters a culture of precision, which is essential for successful outcomes. 11. Tell me about a time when you showed initiative in your role. I noticed a gap in our team's communication regarding project updates. Instead of waiting for someone else to address it, I took the initiative to create a weekly update email that outlined key progress and upcoming tasks for everyone involved. This not only improved transparency but also fostered collaboration as team members could reference the email for updates and share their insights. The positive feedback from my colleagues encouraged me to continue this practice, which ultimately led to smoother project execution in a more cohesive team environment. 12. How do you handle constructive criticism? Handling constructive criticism is crucial for personal growth. I approach feedback with an open mind, recognizing that it offers valuable insights for improvement. When I receive criticism, I take a moment to process it before responding. I ask clarifying questions to ensure I understand the perspective being shared. Afterward, I reflect on the feedback and identify specific actions I can take to address the points raised. This proactive approach enables me to turn criticism into a learning opportunity, fostering my professional development and enhancing my contributions to the team. 13. Describe your experience with Lean Six Sigma methodologies and how you've applied them. My experience with Lean Six Sigma methodologies began during my time at a previous organization, where I was part of a team focused on process improvement. I participated in several training sessions, obtaining Green Belt certification. One notable project involved streamlining our inventory management process. By applying DMAIC principles, we identified bottlenecks and implemented solutions that reduced lead time by 30%. This project not only improved efficiency but also fostered a culture of continuous improvement within the team. I frequently advocate for lean principles in ongoing projects, emphasizing waste reduction and value creation. 14. How would you contribute to GE's culture of innovation? I would contribute to GE's culture of innovation by fostering a mindset that embraces creativity and collaboration. By actively participating in brainstorming sessions and encouraging diverse perspectives, I would help generate fresh ideas that align with GE's strategic goals. My experience in implementing agile methodologies allows me to adapt quickly to changing requirements and promote iterative development. Additionally, I would leverage data-driven insights to identify opportunities for improvement, ensuring that innovative solutions are not only creative but also practical and aligned with customer needs. 15. Tell me about a time when you had to make a decision with limited information. Making decisions with limited information can be challenging. In one instance, I was tasked with leading a project that had a tight deadline and insufficient data regarding customer preferences. I gathered my team for a brainstorming session, where we discussed various scenarios and potential outcomes. By analyzing past trends and customer feedback, we developed a hypothesis and moved forward with a prototype. After initial testing, we received valuable insights that allowed us to make necessary adjustments. This experience taught me the importance of collaboration and adaptability in decision-making. 16. How do you stay motivated when working on long-term projects? Staying motivated on long-term projects requires setting clear milestones and celebrating small victories along the way. I break the project into manageable tasks, which allows me to focus on immediate goals while maintaining sight of the bigger picture. Regularly reviewing progress helps me stay engaged and adapt as necessary. I also seek feedback from colleagues and stakeholders, which provides fresh perspectives and keeps me accountable. Additionally, I remind myself of the project's impact and purpose, fueling my passion and commitment throughout the journey. 17. Describe a situation where you had to persuade others to adopt your idea or approach. In a previous role, I identified an opportunity to streamline our project management process by implementing a new software tool. I organized a meeting with my team to present my findings, emphasizing the tool's benefits, such as increased efficiency and better communication. To address concerns, I provided data from similar organizations that successfully adopted it. By actively listening to feedback and incorporating suggestions, I gained their trust. Ultimately, the team agreed to trial the software, resulting in a 20% reduction in project turnaround time and improved collaboration. 18. 
How do you ensure effective communication within a team? Effective communication within a team is vital for success. I prioritize establishing clear channels, using tools like project management software and instant messaging platforms to facilitate information sharing. Regular check-ins and updates help keep everyone aligned. I encourage open dialogue, where team members feel comfortable sharing ideas and concerns. Active listening is key. I make sure to acknowledge all contributions. Additionally, I tailor my communication style to meet the needs of different team members, ensuring everyone understands and feels included in discussions. 19. Tell me about a time when you failed at something. What did you learn from it? In my previous role, I was tasked with leading a project that aimed to streamline our team's reporting process. I was overly confident and didn't involve my team in the planning phase, believing I could handle it alone. The initial rollout was a disaster, the new system was confusing and met with resistance. This experience taught me the importance of collaboration and seeking input from my team. I learned that failure can be a powerful teacher, highlighting the significance of collective effort and communication in achieving success. 20. How do you approach learning new technologies or processes? Learning new technologies or processes begins with a mindset that embraces curiosity and adaptability. I first identify the specific knowledge or skills required and then seek out relevant resources, such as online courses, webinars, or tutorials. Engaging with peers and mentors also plays a crucial role, as their insights can expedite the learning process. I believe in hands-on experience, so I apply what I learn through practical projects or simulations. Regularly reviewing my progress and reflecting on my learning helps reinforce new concepts and ensures I stay current in my field. 21. Describe a time when you had to balance multiple priorities. How did you manage it? When I was leading a project with tight deadlines, I found myself juggling multiple responsibilities, including coordinating team tasks, managing client expectations, and ensuring quality control. To handle this, I created a priority matrix, categorizing tasks based on urgency and importance. This helped me identify which tasks required immediate attention and which could be delegated. Regular check-ins with my team ensured we stayed aligned, and I used project management tools to track progress. By maintaining open communication, we successfully met all deadlines while delivering high-quality results. 22. How would you handle a conflict between team members during a high-stakes project? To address a conflict between team members during a high-stakes project, I would first facilitate a private conversation between the involved parties. This allows each individual to express their concerns and viewpoints without interruption. I would encourage open communication and active listening, guiding them toward understanding each other's perspectives. If necessary, I would mediate the discussion to find common ground and collaboratively brainstorm solutions. Emphasizing the project's goals and the importance of teamwork ensures that everyone remains focused on the shared objective, fostering a collaborative environment. 23. Tell me about a time when you went above and beyond your job responsibilities. I once worked on a project with a tight deadline, and our team was struggling to meet the required deliverables. I identified a gap in our workflow and took the initiative to streamline communication between departments. This involved creating a shared online platform for updates and feedback, which improved collaboration significantly. I also volunteered to take on additional tasks, ensuring that our project was completed ahead of schedule. My efforts not only helped the team succeed but also fostered a stronger bond among team members, enhancing our future collaboration. 24. How do you ensure that you're adhering to safety protocols in your work? Ensuring adherence to safety protocols is paramount in my work. I start by familiarizing myself with all relevant safety guidelines and regulations, as well as company policies. I conduct regular checks of my work environment to identify potential hazards and address them promptly. Additionally, I participate in safety training and encourage open communication within the team regarding safety concerns. By fostering a culture of safety, I ensure everyone remains vigilant and informed. Regularly reviewing and discussing safety practices keeps them fresh in our minds and reinforces their importance. 25. Describe a situation where you had to develop a long-term relationship with a customer or stakeholder. In my previous role, I worked closely with a key client who was initially skeptical about our services. I focused on understanding their unique needs and challenges by scheduling regular check-ins and feedback sessions. By actively listening and providing tailored solutions, I built trust over time. I also ensured transparency and communication, which helped in addressing any concerns promptly. As a result, the client became not only loyal but also an advocate for our services, referring new business opportunities and collaborating on future projects. This experience taught me the value of patience and proactive engagement in relationship building. In this video, we've explored the top 25 general electric interview questions and provided insightful answers to help you prepare effectively. By understanding these common queries, you can enhance your confidence and improve your chances of success during the interview process. Remember to tailor your responses to reflect your unique experiences and skills. If you found this content helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more valuable insights and tips. Your support helps us create more useful content for you.